Bertha, lovely Bertha, you are a lovely machine, and anyone who works with you will know just what I mean. Whoa, Bertha, lovely Bertha, sometimes I think you're a dream. When we work out what you have to do, you can always turn the goods out, always turn the goods out. We can depend upon you. Clicking in the day, flashing in the night, your computer is shining brightly. Some people say you have a mind of your own, and I think that's very likely, likely. Bertha, lovely Bertha, sometimes I think you're a dream. When we work out what you can do, you can know turn the goods out, and we turn the goods out, we can depend upon you. Birth Project started in the late 70s by Claydine Industries. It was uh, an experiment to create artificial intelligence and was in its early stages with the prototype Bertha, a self-maintaining conveyor belt production machine. Well, when Claydine went into receivership, our manager bought the original Bertha for use in the factory. Spotty's Wooden Company obtained Bertha with the intention of automating their own production process. Almost immediately Mr. Wilmate started making redundancies. Rumours started flying around about half the workforce being made redundant. A few people were upset by Bertha coming in. But it was the early 80s and times were changing. Sure, Bertha had some teething problems when she started working here, but we managed to work around that. It was Bertha's loud mistakes and problems that people found so endearing, and that led to the BBC's interest. Bertha, lovely Bertha. Aye, when the TV programme came out, it really put Spots Wood and Co on the map, and everyone wanted to meet Bertha. When the children's television programme started, the debate about Bertha's artificial intelligence really took off. People began questioning whether Bertha was indeed self-aware and therefore a living being. Some people agreed Bertha was alive, others were seemingly insulted by the idea. Well, you didn't need to ask us whether Bertha was alive or not. She was alive to me and to all of us that worked with her. Things started to go bad when Mr. Wilmot hired Mr. Lancaster as assistant manager. Straight away people didn't like him. He liked to make changes to take over, throw his substantial weight around. The TV show had become the company's main income and suddenly there were more staff than was needed. So Mr. Lancaster came in to streamline the whole process. Security was replaced by cameras and the office staff were mostly replaced thanks to a new fangled computer networking system. There was talk of me being replaced by this new computer system, just as a lot of other staff were being laid off. But it was when Roy was laid off that Bertha was hurt the most. Bertha's positronic brain and a tendency to make connections with certain people. Some would call it a friendship with people. Roy was hired as part of a special needs program. He started for a few weeks on work experience and then, after Bertha took a shine to him, we kept him on. Just after Roy was fired, we started having problems with the computer network. Mr. Wilmot's console in his office started getting strange, garbled images. It took some time to decipher the images that were appearing on the network. But eventually they realised they were coming from Bertha herself. The images appeared to be Bertha's subconscious. In effect, her dreams were being sent through the network. One night, Mr. Lancaster was working on the factory floor. He liked to work late, since he'd laid off most of the production staff. He looked to be tinkering with Bertha on ladders, 
I don't think he knew what he was doing up there. Personally, I think he was looking for an excuse to get rid of me, the b Then, summit happened. The interference on the video was caused by a spike in Bertha's positronic net. When she was required to perform a complex equation or was stacking up, this kind of interference happened. No one really knows what happened that night. It's not clear. If you ask me, it was suicide. The papers were all over the story saying terrible things about Bertha. Bertha's brain was built to learn, but also had a behaviour chip to regulate decisions that went against her early programming. If Bertha had indeed caused this incident, it would have been caused by a very strong emotional response to something. All I know is Bertha wasn't capable of murder. I knew her too well. We all did. After all the publicity, they cancelled the TV show. Then all the work started drying up. We kept running for a while, but it wasn't long before we had to close down. Thank God for Mr. Willmake. He kept the property and paid for Bertha's power supply. Mr. Wilmate managed to keep Bertha powered up for 10 years, all alone on that factory floor, until he passed away. When the bills started arriving at Mr. Wilmake's benefactor's door, they were having none of it. They weren't going to pay to keep some machine running. They always thought their dad was a bit mental, forking out large amounts of the kid's inheritance, or keeping a machine running. Bertha's brain required constant power to keep running. Any kind of power loss and the positronic connections would begin to degrade like a human brain if deprived of oxygen. In effect, the brain would die. A few of us got together and started a campaign to keep Bertha running. We wrote to everyone we could and managed to keep Bertha alive for years. Then along came the Reverend Tim. Tim's had a lot to say about the whole debate of Bertha being self-aware. Over the years he had formed a campaign against Bertha, and now they had turned their attention to Bertha's power consumption. Only God gives life, and any suggestion of this mass of metal and wires can possibly have an eternal soul is an affront to God. Tim set up a whole campaign dedicated to shutting down Bertha. Eventually he tried to have our campaign closed down at the High Court. Christians around the world are having the human rights to worship infringed by this irresponsible campaign to keep this machine going. Tim's won his case, and it was decided Bertha was to have her power shut off. I think it was worse for Ted. He'd been Bertha's operator since she'd been at the factory, and now he was required to shut her down. I wish I could tell you Bertha's passing was quiet, dignified and without suffering, but I'm afraid I can't do that. When I cut the power, she made a sound I'll never forget. Like a scream, but a horrific metallic noise. Then she slowly faded away. But she never once took her eyes off me the whole time. I was the last thing she saw before she died. The factory was closed up and we all went our separate ways. It wasn't long however, I noticed signs of break-ins around the building. Kids were going in for a look, smash things up, see what they could nick. They were stealing parts to sell. The day I saw one of Bertha's eyes on eBay, I was physically sick. Then the army moved in, sealing off the place. Each day we saw trucks and people moving in and out. Soldiers, American agents and the finest mines from Japan. But no one was saying what they were doing. Certain parts of Bertha had been secret military technology at the time. The army may have been securing their own hardware, as well as further research on Bertha's systems. Then I started getting the images on my PC at home. 
What seemed like meaningless noise was deciphered as Bertha's dreams. A chill went down my spine when I was shown them. It seems Bertha had used the factory network to access the phone system and was again sending subconscious images to her operator. After the military left, everything was locked up and sealed off. Then people started reporting flickering lights from inside the factory and strange noises. After I saw more of Bertha's dreams, I realised I had to come back. After the lights and the images, Ted felt he had to go back inside. I told him I didn't think he'd like what he'd find in there. I didn't recommend Ted to go back to the factory. What was left of her would not be the Bertha he remembered. They don't understand. One of Bertha's nightmares would have me switching her off. Back in the 80s we could always depend upon Bertha. Sadly, Bertha couldn't depend upon us. <laughs>